Hello, welcome to the Call to Courage podcast. I'm Gareth Pickering, and my guest today is a dear brother from Australia, South African in Australia, Craig Hayward. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, it's uh, awesome to be here. Uh, it's, yeah, I was saying to you just before we got on, I was like, you've had such amazing guests on already, and uh, there was a little bit of intimidation that was coming through for me there because I just thought how, um, how, how deep some people have gone, how switched on some people are, but... Um, as always, you're a, an amazing buddy and, and just uh, full of support. And uh, so I'm really excited to have a chat with you and, and your audience. Thank you, bro. Yeah, and I, I think some of the depth that I feel like you and I have had conversations on in the past is not only the reason why we're deep friends and allies, but the reason that I want to have a conversation with you here. So there's, <laughs> yeah, bro, you have many gifts and I'm super, super jazzed to have this conversation. I want to, <laughs> I want to share coming in here today. <clears throat> I looked at my day and I was like, oh, I've got a coaching session in the morning. That should finish at two. And I had the sense that my day was pretty much done. It was over. And so I noticed myself engaging with cannabis and then recognizing that I'm going to have a podcast with you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. I don't normally <laughs> smoke before I jump on the podcast. And I'm like, well, this is just how it's meant to be today. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You should have told me. I could have been uh, jazzed up. We could have, you know, run on a on a different level. <laughs> you can. Well, you're welcome to join me if you want to. <laughs> hey, it's morning in Australia. I got to still go to my. <laughs> got to work. <laughs> yeah, funny. How's that? We've actually had conversations about our our journey with cannabis. What's how's that for you at the moment? How's your relationship with this beautiful plant and like? How are you feeling with it? I know you, your last voice note said you were having a break from it or yeah, yeah sleeping in your own bed. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, we've, we've danced around this a few times. It's been, uh, been awesome. And uh, it, and I think this is one of the, the awesome things about our friendship and, and good friends in general is that there's always a sense of questioning everything and, and being able to do so in a, in a sort of safe space. Um, but safe to a point, you know, there's, there's also that, that place where your brother will will um, answer you the, uh, sort of ask the direct questions that sometimes they realize that you need and and maybe you don't even and uh, I know uh, we we have that sort of friendship which I'm you know eternally great, grateful for um, and that includes things like you know on the surface level it's sometimes really easy to to just say oh yeah I smoke a joint every now and then and, and what's the harm and, and you know I've done it for a long time it feels good and and I and I I feel relaxed and I feel creative and I feel, you know, and every now and then I know we, you know, as you said, we've had this conversation, like, is that true? You know, that's a, mm -hmm. for me, that's been a really valuable phrase that I ask other people sometimes and I ask myself as well, like, is that true? And I, yeah, I think every now and then it's um, cannabis uh, and all sorts of things that alter our state in some level, our chemistry on some level can, uh, can have a polar, you know, it's always, there's always a polarity to things. And, uh, and I think if we can sort of anticipate that with, with everything, we can be, have an honest conversation about certain things. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, we, you know, By polarity, you mean, you mean it could become an addiction. You could become a dependency for you. Yes, but also just a good and a bad side. You know, like, or, a, uh -huh. or a, like, um, that's that's more what I was thinking. Is there's this like mm -hmm. this aspect that that's uh, always going to be beautiful, and there's uh, of course the more beautiful something is, the, the darker or the deeper the, the the polarity to that thing is, and mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, that that's kind of what I was meaning. So uh, it's it's always easy to, for us to cherry pick the things that are that that are serving <laughs> us uh, from these mm -hmm. things, but and but that's where these kind of conversations, which we which we typically have on a fairly regular basis are really good. So uh, yeah, I was off the, I was off the weed uh, and the coffee for, um, uh, for the, for the month of February. And mm, it was a great experiment. Okay. Um, you know, I, we, I was getting to a bit of a habit, you know, Thursday night <laughs> was the night and, uh, and then, you know, we'd kick back and have a, have a join and, and usually try and, um, try and do something with it, like have some intention behind it, not just, uh, mm, you know, sit back awesome. and escape from the world. You know, sometimes that's valuable too. I'm not, not denying how good that can be, but, um, maybe a bit of yoga, med meditation. But what tends to happen mm. is that one, well, I found out myself slipping into a, a bit of a pattern of just more zoning out, um, and just not being present and, and using that as some kind of a, 
an escape from a like a fucking busy day or whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I think that's when I was like, well, this is I don't how how is that really serving me? Am I just checking out a few hours of my day? And 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 um, not that one needs to always be productive, but you know you, you need to you need to kind of question these. So anyway month of feb none of that no coffee the coffee was more challenging than the weed to be honest <laughs> so really wow. hard. the stimulants um they they challenged me uh quite quite hard um what did you notice having. um i just noticed uh headaches some physical manifestations of of the sort of uh, addictions if you will uh, i don't have i'm not like a heavy coffee drinker but I, I noticed that these are things these are tools that once again are so um commonplace that one doesn't really think twice about mm-hmm. it you know what i mean you just go oh, fuck it, have my yeah. coffee in the morning crack on with the day um and that's also fine you know it's once again all these things take it with a grain of salt like that's nothing there's nothing wrong with that but every now and then it's good to just sort of question that um and so that challenged me and i, I found myself almost for the entire month um almost anticipating my coffee for the next day or, or that wow. or in the morning and I'd be like you know like geez i look and i think it's tied to the to some ritual you know like i like to wake up have a uh, you know have a coffee um, have a uh, have a bit of a read, and that's that's my little ritual. If I if I smoked a pipe, I think that would be fucking rad as well. I would, you know, uh-huh. the same kind of thing. You know, you you sit there with your little box, and you you make you you have something physical. You smell it, you taste it. Um, mm-hmm. and, but then what I realized was, since I this is the interesting like manifestation that I didn't realize I was doing was it was actually serving as a um, as a distraction from things I should be doing. So so what I noticed was is that I would have my coffee and then I would sometimes take long with my coffee and I'd sit there and I'd, I'd, I'd med- like meditate on it and, and, and all these things. And then I'd be like, oh, fuck, I'm a bit late to go to the gym now. I've got to go to work. Or, and then I'd, I'd kind of procrastinated through the use of, in some ways, the coffee, um, mm-hmm. which, was, which was serving as a sort of a distraction for things I knew I should be doing, which was quite mm-hmm. interesting. I, that was an unanticipated thing that I didn't realize I was, I realized I was doing with through coffee. Um, and so, you know, these, that's why coming fucking long, close the loop on that initial question is like, um, yeah, it's just valuable to, to have these things. But, but how about you? How's, how's your journey been? I know, um, we've both had quite different sort of journeys with it. It's been, I guess, similar to you. I recognize, um, I've been looking at, I think I shared this with you before, my life as being in relationship with the things in my life. So what is my relationship to my body? What is my relationship to alcohol? What is my relationship to cannabis? And yeah, I think there's a place where I've used this analogy of my, of cannabis, like a lover, you know, there's a part of me sometimes that I feel is super beautiful and I'm in the flow and I'm super grateful for it. And then I notice that there are sometimes, especially when I have the vape where I'm like, I'm hitting it for the third time in a day, perhaps. And there's a part of me that's like, it's like a hungry ghost that just can't get enough or something like that, you know? And if I look at it like a relationship, if that was manifested into people, I would think that person was a pig or a pervert. It's a little bit like, you know, the, the sacredness of the medicine is, is not there. And so I think that's sometimes where I feel I go like perhaps a little bit shadowy with it. And um, yeah, a little bit codependent if I was to, to describe it. So yeah, that's really just taking breaks from it regularly. And yeah, I notice sometimes when I take a break, I'm making all these agreements and negotiations with myself about why I should stop earlier or that I don't need to carry on with it. And it's it's really interesting mental mindfuckery to watch inside myself as mm. I as I go through this process of checking where I, I'm renegotiating two parts of myself are negotiating about what we should do here. Yeah. <laughs> and um <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes where I've failed, it's been like, if I use my inner kingdom analogy, it's like my CEO and the king are like, right, we're not going to smoke cannabis for the whole month. And so then we do that and we have like a really fucking strong week. And a part of my rebel who smoked cannabis pretty much every day for most of my life is like, what the fuck is going on? And he's making yeah. such a noise that like the inner kingdom is in proper turmoil. And there's some sense of like not getting buy-in from everybody yeah, break would be good. But if you have, I noticed I developed a pattern and I would say probably even a dependency on the, on the plot mm-hmm. in a way that when I cut it out, like I feel like I'm, what's been more successful for me is doing it a bit more slowly. Like saying, okay, let me take these two days and yeah, I'll smoke again on Wednesday. Or I've got these two things happening specifically like money tasks or accounting. 
and then I'll perhaps engage in the afternoon or I wanted to support a workout and I'll have it on that particular day or I'm going to go hiking or something like that, which I think for me just brings back maybe what you said, like the intention with which you use the medicine is as important as the medicine itself. So I think yeah. where I lack presence and awareness of how I'm using it is where I start to feel like I might be, yeah, not in alignment with something. Interesting. I like that. I think, I think intention is probably like at a root of a lot of things that we do, right? That, that I think is a very, very supportive uh, tool to, to be using in our lives just in general, you know, and mm. I think it sort of ties into presence and it ties in, into mindfulness and all these kinds of things, which are all like well-established things, but it's like, um, I think one can like incorporate it into, oh, I've actually been trying to do that more lately just is, is um, obviously the weed thing was, was part of it. Like that, that sort of struck that it brought it up for me a little bit, but then it's like um, a little bit of that saying, you know, that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything in a way. So like uh -huh. when I, you know, you, uh -huh. it's linked to that in some way. So it's like, if I make mm -hmm. my bed, you know, like fucking do it well, like make the thing. And I'm, I'm terrible with this. Like my, my default mode is to like, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll, I'll chuck it there and I'll come back now. I'll, I'll be back in a bit, you know? Um, uh -huh. And that's my, and I really have to like be present with like, okay, I'm going to fetch that thing, put it there, do it nicely, close it off. It's done, you know, like, and uh, I think if, and I think it's the same thing with the, with the weed and stuff. But I, I also like the idea that you were saying is like, you don't always have to have like a long break and, and make this whole rigmarole out of it. You can kind of be like, okay, well today I've got certain tasks that um, generally you, if you've really like done some work on yourself and you've identified the way you operate well, um, or, or which areas you operate well in with the weed and which ones you don't, then that's the in and of itself is that intentionality. And then you, then you're really fine. You know, I, I don't, I don't see any issue there. And that actually is probably a nice balance um, with taking breaks or like today I've got a big day of fucking numbers or whatever it is. And, I, and, I, <laughs> and when I'm on the weed, when I'm smoking some weed, I'm like terrible with that. So then don't uh -huh. smoke on that day and just fucking get on there. So yeah, that's, I feel like that's a, quite a nice uh, realistic way of doing things. Yeah. Mm, thank you, bro. How have you come back to um, cannabis and caffeine after your month off? Have you come back with some rules or you just flow and go? Like, what are you feeling about those two substances in your life? I still have, I think it brought up a lot of questions for me, especially on the caffeine um, uh -huh. or both really, but the, so there's this constant question in my mind behind um, physical health, mental health, uh, what serves you, what doesn't serve you, and, and trying to find this. We've spoken about this a lot. Like you've got this one sort of, um, I forget what it's, what it's called now, but it's like a Venn diagram type thing where you can, where you can find the pros and cons of things and the, and the polarity within things and see finding yeah. that sort of middle ground. What, what is the framework of that? Just, just so a useful tool. That, right? So it's called a polarity map. Oh, and I learned it in a ninja web uh, program that I was on with Jamie Wheel from the Flow Genome. And he's got all these tools for thinking. But you map these two polarities and recognize that neither of them are right or wrong. But there are elements of with, which, which are positive, And there are elements with that polarity when you spend too much time in that polarity that end up being negative. And yeah. you, you put those two polarities there and you identify what the fears and desires are for each of those polarities so cannabis and no cannabis the desire for cannabis is to feel connected to myself to be creative to go into a space where i'm more connected to nature my body blah, blah, blah. the potential shadow side of cannabis when you do too much of it is you feel anxious disconnected from the world you're in a codependent relationship you can't stop when you say you're breaking agreements with yourself so i've done this with cannabis the other side is the positives is like you've always got a clean, sober mind, but the downside is that you don't get to access the creative state that mm. cannabis gives you or some of the blessings that you have. So you're navigating between these two polarities and you identify early warning signs for each one. So like too much smoking starts to look like what? For me, breaking agreements with myself, you know, or <laughs> it gets so nuanced, the shadow work. Or a part of me knows that if I don't set a, 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 an agreement or a rule around it, I'll default to smoking. Mm. So today's a good example. I was like, ah, I'll leave tomorrow open and see what unfolds. And I guess that's okay. 
And yeah, perhaps if I'd had a specific intention of what I wanted to say tonight, I might have been decided I don't want to be stoned for the meeting with somebody that involves like me not being in my creative flow. I need to count numbers. Or yeah, yeah. You know? And I've noticed this as well. Like sometimes, you know, I have this um, built on business here and most of where I live, people operate on cash. And so sometimes I'll smoke and then I'll go into town and do built on business. And I'm like, fuck it, I can't count the money. And I'm like, <laughs> Is it 10 or 15? And I'm talking oh. Spanish and it's like, it can be a bit of a mess if I, <laughs> if I haven't been that intentional about what I need to do with my day when I choose to engage. So yeah, the polarities map is super, super good. I'll, I think I'll share a link in the show notes. If uh, yeah, I'll do that. That'll be sweet. No worries. Yeah. So look, I mean, so that, so that's been, thanks for sharing that by the way, because that, that's been like pretty useful for me. And I, and I think so, so kind of linking what we're talking about here into like the bigger world. Like I, I feel like, Everything in life is nuanced, right? And, and I think mm -hmm. that's why it's maybe when, when, when we're younger, I think we tend to th see things in black and white and there's like one way or there's another way and we kind of follow these things and we, we go down these roles. And what I've noticed in, as I get older is, and, and whether it's wisdom or not, but it, it's like I feel like it almost becomes clearer and simpler, but it also becomes more complicated because um, there's, you know, what is right and wrong? You know, these are these are classic questions, right? What is truth? What is not truth? Um, and when we have scenarios like, say, small things like in our lives, like the coffee or the or, or the or you know, smoking marijuana, um, within that, there's the nuances again. So if we if we get good at doing those sort of <clears throat> um, mind experiments in our own lives on a regular basis, I think it helps us navigate the the, the bigger world too, doesn't it? Because we like, okay, well, it's not black and white. Like sometimes I want to fucking smoke a joint and I want to be super stoned. I don't want to be engaging with the world. And that's totally okay sometimes. But then, yes. but then someone else will make an argument like, okay, but what has that done to your brain? What has that done to your memory, mm -hmm. your long-term memory? How much is that going to affect you in your future that you wish you didn't do? And which mm -hmm. one is more valuable? Which one is more important? Is it the long-term health aspect of your memory? For example, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just using it as an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've yeah. got like, well, I'm sitting here. Um, and I had a fucking great deep meditation uh, and, I, and I felt profound um, wisdom about something I've been dealing with. Now, which one is more valuable? Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is more valuable. And, and mm -hmm. that's why if we can start playing these games within our own lives and, and seeing nuance, it helps us navigate the bigger world. Because, um, you know, we, we often, our, our ego is often confronted with like stuff that's uncomfortable. Like probably every day, you know, like you've got... Um, some, someone comes to you with something in, in, in business or in life or, and, um, and, and it, it rubs you up the wrong way. And then, but, but I think the more I've tried to like play with these sort of games with myself in my, you know, with smaller things in your day-to-day -day life, it, 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 it does translate into the, into the bigger world. And, and you can come at things with, with good faith or better faith than you would have in the past. And you can be like um, more open to like, okay, well, maybe that, what you're saying now, it, it doesn't vibe with my worldview currently, but I can see where you're coming from. And, and there mm -hmm. is a nuance there that maybe I'd never seen before. Um, like my example with the, with the coffee maybe being a pro, actually a procrastination tool, which I thought that I always thought it was the direct opposite. I always thought it was well, the coffee is going to make me more productive and fuck it, you know? So, mm -hmm. so that, was, that, that went against my worldview at the time. And um, so by playing these games within ourselves, um, and I call it a game. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, the it's like a thought experiment. Like thought experiments, yeah. Um, and having yeah. buddies like like yourself, um, and and to say, well, uh, you know, is that is that true? Is it fucking serving you or not? Um, is I, I don't even know if you can state how valuable that sort of thing is, because um, at the end of the day, you just end up navigating your world in just a, a nuanced, uh, interesting, and curious way, which I think. So these small things that seem sort of semi insignificant to anyone else that may be listening, um, you've got your own ideas of your day and your little things that you do in your day. And, and when you start to like have that intent around and play around with it and, and do these thought experiments, it, it translates super well into the rest of what I've found anyway. And, and I think that's why it's, it's like fun to do these things, have these kind of conversations, you know? Mm -hmm. So good. It's like, um, Oh, there's so much I want to share with you there. But the one thing that you're talking about is another thing that I learned inside this Jamie Wheel coaching container was 
the first line of learning is fixing the problem. Um, the second, the second line of learning is recognizing what you did to fix the problem and making sure that it doesn't happen again. Mm. So there's like an extra level of understanding in a, in a situation, but then there's the level, which is you want to develop the thinking that got you to think about the way to solve the problem. So how did I think and how do I think more like that as a way to be able to access other things? So it like becomes like another layer of being conscious of, you know, you can solve the problem by doing this, but then you can recognize that there's another level, but then you can also, how do I train the thinking that makes me think more like the way that's analytically solving problems that way or asking better questions or whatever it is that you've recognized by running these thought experiments? So there's a, there's just off the back of that, I, I was listening to someone saying something similar in a totally different sort of um, direction, but um, they were saying like, you figured something out in your in your life about something, but you didn't recognize the blueprint for how you did that. Mm -hmm. so, and I thought, oh, that's fucking interesting because you might like <laughs> work at something and get it and you're like, fuck, I finally figured this thing out. It could be a tech problem. It could be a whatever. It could be a money be, thing. You could yeah, money suddenly, thing. You know. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And then you go like, uh -huh. fuck, I did it. I figured it out. And you go like, Jesus, can I repeat this? How did I do that? What is, and, and so it's, <laughs> it's actually good to like have a, a mindset of like, okay, I need to blueprint stuff in my life that's kind of i think the way i see what you were just saying is like something mm. like that and you're going like okay well i've i've actually created a blueprint for the next time this arises i actually have a reference point that i can like not just um go like you said go back to your default mode you're actually going i've got mm -hmm. this blueprint for this scenario here it is and so like once again having that presence and awareness in uh in our day-to-day -day tasks we, we might actually create that little blueprint for next time so yeah it's mm -hmm. i mean obviously it's Sounds fucking kind of easy, but like you can't live your life like constantly recording every little thing that you. <laughs> but yeah. in some ways, the it's it somehow is just bringing you back to more and more present because surely in the present moment you recognize this is that's it. You just don't need to worry about everything. You don't have to if you're present right here, right now. This is like the general practice, and that's true. Be running thought experiments is concerned about you know m how much cannabis I'm smoking or not smoking or whether I'm accessing the right you know like. Right now, everything's perfectly fine and we can let go of all of that. <laughs> yeah, that's freeing. It's super freeing to like really let that really sink in and, and, and just trust, like trusting the universe's flow. Um, uh, it's, it's like so, it's so like some of these things are so cheesy and so like um, sort of esoteric on some level. But on, on, the, on another layer, once again, this polarity is like this is super profound and, and, it, and it genuinely changes your life. So it's like, I think I've had this issue in the past where I would scoff at things. I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Wow, this is so stupid. Like, I'd laugh at people. You know, I'd, I, there'd be some guy I would say something and I'd be like, oh. I had this default mode of like mocking it or laughing it with my buddies. Like, ah, oh, this is so fucking, listen to this tool, you know? And, um, uh -huh. and, and then, but, but sometimes within those like real simple adages and things like that are, are like super, like so much gold, you know? <laughs> so like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like, uh, I, I love the fact that by, by just feeling intent and presence, um, I love that idea that that makes you feel at ease and at peace. And right now, there's nothing else than right now than this conversation that we're having. And someone who's listening to this is like, that that's enough. It, it, that's enough. You know, that's kind of the thing for me that was always like hard, you know. Um, I, we always this is something I've been, I've been battling with this. Sorry. No, no. I've been battling with this on... Um, in my own journey, I'm recognizing that the way we've started to speak of, as creators and even as I create highlights from this podcast and share it on social media, we've adapted our way of speaking to the way of the algorithm. Instead of having normal breaths in between sentences, we make it shorter so that it's more punchy and keep people engaged for longer. Mm. And yeah, I noticed a part of me feels quite a lot of resistance when I would need to like you know, make it as short as possible. And it's one of the reasons that I love podcasts because it, it flows at a normal rhythm, you know, like the nervous system gets a chance to listen to two human beings speak. And I think the podcast creation software that we have has this thing that says you can trim out the, the silent spots. And like, unless there's a proper mistake in the podcast, I want to leave that in because that's how we had this conversation. And I would rather people just get the opportunity to sit in on a live conversation than to be it sounds like yeah. what we get spoken to at the moment, we put most of our attention on, and this is even me speaking, 
courage is kind. In relationships, you got to show up in these five ways. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. And it's like, cool. And it's, it's, it's serving. And I, I trust that it's in service of what it is that, I, that I'm showing up for in the world. But there's a part of me that feels some resistance of having to try and deliver my message in 60 seconds or less, because that's what serves whoever it is that it serves. And so, yeah, I feel a little bit of resistance in that. Yeah. It's a really interesting topic, like sort of thought because um, I think more and more, like even if you're a sales a salesperson or you're in a business or in your uh, just real life, I think there's something super profound about a pause, you know, like if mm-hmm. you can, that, that emptiness is there's so much happening in mm. that, you know, and mm-hmm. it's what, when one can uh, embrace that, pause in your your life like i find so much value value in that and uh it's the direct opposite like you said when you're clipping like as you as you know i used to run a podcast with uh, gareth martin another great yes. uh, brother of ours and yeah. uh, he's obviously continued the podcast now but um I, I used to edit the thing and and when i started doing it and for most of the time because we didn't know any better i was cutting out all the i went through the whole podcast and i'd edit out those little um, gaps, you know, and, and uh, we, that was before I knew about software that would do that for you. So, um, <laughs> uh-huh. I don't think I was and, around then. You old school podcasters, you yeah. So, so it was like, <laughs> um, anyway, and and I thought, and in retrospect, I like, I, I really wish I hadn't done that, you know, to listen back to those old chats because um, there's that. I don't know. Just I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like a, it's almost like a nervous system thing. It's like your. Uh, there's something so powerful in in speech and language and body language and and part of a conversation is the is the emptiness the silence in between which I, it's hard to quantify because we always think we need mm. to fill a vacuum tends to pull something in there's always a mm-hmm. in, in life you know and, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 whatever that pulls in is is what's actually interesting so I don't know if like it's it's kind of a, a weird concept but I I, I dig the idea of um, of embracing a pause. And and I, I also think it's a fine line again, because I, I also think there's some people that kind of use it too much. And then it's like, I feel like it's dickish, you know, like you, are you trying to, like, like, I know that guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, bro, can you tell me what you actually want to say? It's all there, but he's trying to put on that piece. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like fucking finding that middle ground there. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, funny. See, see what I did there. Yeah, that was, that was profound. <laughs> profound. And I let you have what it. That <laughs> <laughs> is a good reminder because I notice on this podcast and also when I'm holding space in the King's Circle, um, which is now happening pretty regularly, every second week we have the circle, which is going super well. But I notice I get excited and I want to share. And there's a part of me that could really be served by just taking a breath before I move into the next piece because I have this tendency of like, ah, oh, we've got two hours and I'm, you know, Put still it all a little in. anxious doing this stuff. And yeah, even on the podcast, it's like, ah, oh, I've got to make sure it keeps flowing. And yeah, I feel anxious every time still. It's, <laughs> it's weird, I guess eh? it's part of the creative process, you know? Yeah. And, and also we, uh, I guess this also comes back to somewhat of our like upbringing in our childhood and our people pleasing. I know both of us have had sort of aspects of this um, in our lives. And mm-hmm. I really struggle with the awkward, in inverted commas, uh, awkward silence. Awkward for me often. And mm-hmm. um, I, I mean, I genuinely, my default mode is often to say, well, as soon as I find there's a moment of that, like even when you took that long pause there a moment ago, like it, it felt awkward for me for a moment, <laughs> which is good. That's, that, that's beautiful. Uh, well played. <laughs> uh, like, because I was like, what I, what I tend to want to do when it's in in real life is I want to like, I kind of want to walk. I'm like, cool. I'm there's that moment of awkwardness. I'm not in. I don't have something straight away to add. So that I'm like, cool. It was lovely to see you. Um, uh, goodbye. Like I'll I'll like leave the conversation. That's that's my default mode, which is quite sad actually. And and one misses out on so much um, more possibilities. And I'm, I'm sure I've done that so many times in my life where I'm at a party or I'm at a thing, and I just feel there's a moment where I'm at, I hit that like deep awkward silence, and I don't know what to say, and then I actually physically leave like. The, I'm like I'm, I feel like that was the end of that. So um, yeah, it's weird how we have these these little things. And so silence, um, it is really powerful. And I know in my work, um, 
when I'm working, when I'm doing body work, I'm working with people. Uh, I've really had to, I've really had to learn to say as little as possible. Like it's been so hard for me because I, I always want to, I always want to like add some cool thing that I know or some fucking hack or uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, and, and what I've had to really learn is that uh, in a con in conversation, it's like, we, we don't know what's coming. We, we, we manifesting the whole time. We, we don't know what our brains are going to say, Nick, which is fucking rad. There's, there's, some kind of, <laughs> there's some kind of connection that is happening right now between you and me. Some part of that is conscious and like quite a big chunk of that is, is unconscious and subconscious, super conscious, mm -hmm. if you will. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we kind of meshing in the middle somewhere because neither of us actually know what we're going to say. <laughs> which is like fucking kind of cool and weird at the same time. But if we allow that, if we allow that space and know that that space is a real thing, uh, then we can fill things with, with, um, with witnessing. So, so basically I'm witnessing your subconscious come through to me if I allow that to happen, because you're going to say something in a minute that you didn't know you were going to say right now. And so if mm -hmm. I give you that space to do that, suddenly you're, your subconscious is actually manifesting in front of me and I get to witness that. So when I say less and I allow the pauses, we actually create uh, on a whole nother level, which is, is so powerful, man, because, you know, when th there's the, sub the, the super conscious and the subconscious and the, that's, that's where who, we, who Gareth Pickering and Craig Haywood really are. You know, that's what's driving us. And so that's the, I know it seems like quite an esoteric thing, but it, like that's the way I can't see, try and see a good conversation is like, and that's why the pauses and why the um, not going on and on like I'm doing now is so powerful, you know. Bru, that is so that is so strong. Um, I've been that's what's what's coming up for me today is I've just started today with a with a money coach, and we've been looking at these deep seated beliefs. Like, what are the things that genuinely drive at a conscious level? We say I want to be abundant, but there might be years and years of stories that are sitting below the surface that actually carry a lot more weight than the conscious mind. What do you, what do you mean by super conscious? I've never actually heard that before. I think it's just a concept with, um, from these old philosophers and Freudian and, and, and this, this bunch that they, they talk about the, the subconscious, the super conscious is a, I forget who actually coined it, but it's, um, I just like that term more because sub just in my mind sounds, um, uh, Less than. Less than, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the obviously term, but but super conscious is like maybe that's a super yeah. power. There's like a there's a it, so the deepest part of the mind is the sub is the super conscious. Yeah, I mean that's it's I guess it's the semantics, but that's yes that's the way I like to think. Yeah, of yeah, it. that's cool. Yeah, I love that. I love that reframe. Eh? That's quite. We've cool, had, yeah. we had lots of conversations about the power of words that we choose to use. Um, yeah, yeah. Good morning. It's not a very good thing to to be saying to people every day, the, the associations with the word mourning is that you mourn when somebody does. And so, Interesting. yeah, happy rising is a better way to huh. meet somebody in the oh, early cool. part I never of the heard day. That. <laughs> anyway, like but like, it's just small stuff, you know, they also say people's names, the, the power of what your name is, you know, rich instead of something that sounds like, you know, poor, you know, like even the fact that Paul sounds a bit like Paul could have an impact on, the vibration that you carry interesting continually being called rich rich hey rich 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 like he's more likely to have more experience in his dick? life that resembles <laughs> dick <laughs> yeah lucky guy lucky guy <laughs> so so tell me was that was that linked to the to this money this blueprinting that you're that you're sort of going through at the moment or this this um, un unpacking of your money story my unpacking of my money story is yeah, I think some part of me has failed to see the results in my in my business for the amount of energy and effort that I'm putting into it. I'm investing money and life force and team into this and something is not flowing back into my world yet. And yeah, I just feel like there's something that needs to be shifted. And I get a sense that it's deeply rooted because every other part of me wants to, yeah, have my business be super abundant. But at the moment, I just it's not being reflected back to me in a way that points to some part of me needing to look at something. So yeah, I employed this, this coach, we started working together. I don't like the word employed. Like we're going on a journey together. 
um Deep yeah road. and he came through to, yeah just connected and yeah he came through as a recommendation from my weekly men's circle when i was sharing where i was on this path because the journey that i've had with money has been no we all got a money story but you know my story where i took sixty thousand dollars that i had saved away from for a rainy day put it into crypto was a millionaire but still never felt as scarce and as full of lack despite having all this wealth in my world and uh, yeah, it's sort of come back down and I sold at the wrong times and I'm in the space now where I'm still up from where I was, but I'm definitely not a millionaire at the moment. But yeah, I'm just checking where some part of me is maybe shaming money or I've got some money story or some validation seeking in, in, in money that could be keeping me blocked or something like that. So yeah, we're talking about our deep-seated beliefs, which made me think of your analogy of superconscious because... That's really what's driving the thought at, at, a, at a more conscious level and the behavior and the speech is these deep-seated beliefs that are imprinted from an early age. I think that's how I understand it. Sure. And that blueprinting exists in everything that we, we do. And, and, and often we, we'll find ourselves saying things like, um, it's hard or it's, you know, all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Like it's so hard to make money. Or, 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 no, that's, that's too obvious. Like it's sometimes it's more subtle than that. And then you, that's where you realize, ah, that is the blueprinting that I've had, you know, this, uh, but it's interesting to me, um, if I may, like, you know, you, you, you exited the successful business marketing business back in mm -hmm. the day. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm kind of wondering you, that wasn't, you had no money issue there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, so mm -hmm. it's, I, I'm, I'm not pushing back against what you're saying, but I'm kind of just wondering because you didn't, that was, I don't know, 10 years ago, however long it was ago, I don't know the details of the timeline, but mm -hmm. you, you, you built this thing up, you, you know, you were operating. I know that it had its shadow, of course, too. Um, but if it was a proper blueprint, how did you achieve that? Or was that all just like ego pushing it through? Or I don't know, maybe what, what, what like, how did you, how would you take that? I love that. Thank you. I love that question. Bri. It's yeah. So I think, there's a, like you said earlier, it's nuanced. There's not like an exact answer. Mm -hmm. Some of it has to forgive and learn to love the version of Gareth that was making money there. That was sometimes like, yeah, maybe acting from a place of fear and scarcity and how I ran my, my business and my world. And I'm, like there's stuff and decisions that I made then that I wouldn't make now. And so learning to love and accept that part of myself. I'm going to put Zen outside. Give me one Good. second here. Oh, oh little man. Let's put you outside. I'm talking to Uncle Kevin. Maybe in you it was you. You wanted to come and say hello. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so I think there could be a bit of that. You know, like the story that if I suddenly have money again, I become that guy. So that could be a pattern that keeps you blocked. Sure. That's one to potentially look at. Another one to potentially look at that I'm unpacking is, you know, is it good that you, or are you allowed to make money from businesses that are in service to humanity? You know, like it's okay if you're a banker, but if I'm helping men sort their shit out, of, is it, shouldn't yeah. I be doing that for free? Like some story about that and not, not a belief, but just potentially some, some sense. Um, yeah. I've also had a, a beautiful reflection and unpack of, the relationship that I have with my dad and a comment that he made a while ago that sounded like this is many years ago. I've never seen somebody actually making money in an online business. And I noticed in that moment that I was like, ah, I really want to prove it to him because I know it's possible. And so they could, you know, like the other business was money, but this, this, there's nuance in what, what might be holding me back from, yeah, receiving the abundance that I know that this project and work and what I'm being called to do is deserving of and and i've been tested i've been really challenged we had this it, i'll give you the backstory you know it but for those that are hearing this for the first time funded by this bitcoin money i then went into my i call it my feminine of like ah, oh, you don't need to work so hard you just need to go i can travel the world and money will just flow to you and so a part of that was like, oh, this is a much better way to do it. So I have this analogy of swinging from the strong masculine polarity of build a business, have all the systems, do the things, make the sales calls, bank the profit, to, oh, fuck, I'll take what I did there, have a swing at something. Manifestation is all about having fun and being in your ease. And a million dollars came into my world. 
um, I think I sort of swung more into the opposite polarity of my feminine where I wasn't even counting the money. I was like, oh, I'll grow a team and I'll just keep throwing cash at it. But a part of money, if I look at it as being in a relationship with money, there's a part of me that's like, you know, not keeping a calendar of when your birthday is and showing up for the things and tracking, you know, how I'm showing up for this relationship. I'm just using it like in an irresponsible way that I think is perhaps needing to be called back into a little bit more alignment. And so what that actually looks like for me is like decluttering, finding out how much my loan account is, how much does my team cost me every single month? What is my plan to get profit into the business? When will that happen? And so that's the backstory. And so then I'm like, all right, cool. We've got a 90 day plan that if we don't make a certain revenue number within that time, we're going to have to th rethink about this. And that came and went, we didn't hit the number. And so I'm like, oh, fuck, now what do I do? <laughs> like, it's clear that I don't want to stop doing this. And yeah, so this is where I found myself in trying to solve this problem and recognizing, yeah, I could use a guide to, to help try and track some of these shadows for me that could be preventing this from being as fucking amazing as I know it already is. So there's just, yeah, wanting to, to release that money block and create the space for it to flow in. Mm. Thanks for sharing that, man. Uh, I'm, mm. sure that's, I'm sure that particular, I don't want to use the word block because I think that's, let's say, interesting challenge or something, you know, or interesting point within your, your life as a whole is it's like kind of blocking you in some way. I'm sure that's a very common one, number one. Number two, I think, you know, like anything, it's like recognizing some of that and then allowing your ego to say like, uh, cool, let's get some help on this and, have have some guidance is um i mean i don't know that's that, that's actually the super valuable so thanks for reminding mm. me about that you know just that allowing mm. just that allowing that we don't have to go it alone all the time you know like we, we are we're allowed to co-create and we're allowed to do these things and i know i am mm. just hearing you say that because i know you've you've had that the wealth the abundance and all of that you have it you know we we are abundant no matter what mm -hmm. that's the, that is the beauty yep. right so so like you uh -huh. are 100 percent correct on that and and we always are abundant um, beings um, but mm -hmm. then we, we want to have certain aspects of that abundance that that to to manifest and um I, i'm, I'm kind of interested in um what you were saying there though and, and i think i think i understand but i think and i've always said this to you like you you're an absolute master at uh understanding the world of the deeper spiritual world esoterica if you will or what, it, what the, this kind of world and and then bridging a gap to people like myself and a lot of other people that maybe don't have such a deep understanding of that world but are interested in that world and and so when you said the words i was in my feminine i i'm this is not a criticism, but I think some people could take it the wrong way. And I, and I probably for a moment felt the an ease was mm -hmm. something around Thank you. Um, the feminine irresponsible didn't take. So I'm, I, I'm not saying people will link the two, but maybe you could unpack that just a little bit for mm. me um, into mm. like what, what is part of that feminine? What does that mean in that scenario? And, and where does the masculine thank you. come in? If maybe you could. Wow. Well, thank you. Bro. That's so rich. I didn't recognize that I'd, only use sort of negative connotations to describe the feminine. I don't know if I you think. did that, but I'm just saying I took okay. some of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, sweet. Yeah. And I think I do have that. I mean, I think my work in this incarnation is to recognize that I was born into a male body and I grew up in a predominantly like macho world that prioritized certain characteristics of what it means to be a man that I think my work is really to allow myself to feel and re get reconnected with some of the more call them feminine aspects, which are perhaps more connected to the heart and to emotions. And yeah, it's kind of the idea that the masculine way, for example, in manifestation is to move forward with a plan and to execute on that plan with precision and timelines. So there's a lot of doing where I think from a manifestation perspective, the ability to be able to, magnetize in and trust and vibrate in a way that brings it to you is the more feminine polarity. And so I think that with the tool that we spoke about before, we have both, you know, we could, we can soldier our way through the world with a freaking five, five year plan and an outlook and just beat ourselves into submission. Life will probably give us some lessons on the way. 
And then there's the opposite polarity, which is I'm not doing fucking anything. I'm sitting here and it'll all come to me and I'm just going to, and I think somewhere in between you need to take action when you're wanting to manifest something in. And there's some magic in the manifestation process that is not up to you. You can have as many checklists as, as you want and they can have a five-year plan and a team with KPIs that are dialed into the T, mm. but life doesn't work that way, you know? Sure. So you need to go back into the more surrender and trust that I associate to be feminine. So that's sort of how I Makes think sense. about it. Yeah. Thanks for and so, speaking. To so, you know, you've, you've got this framework around uh, your inner kingdom, which is super powerful. And I think whoever's listening to this should, should 100% explore this. I've explored this a bit, you know, off the back of our conversations and stuff. Um, maybe you just, for the sake of, of, the, of everyone listening, because I, I know I've got a decent understanding of what, what you're doing there, but the, if you've got an inner kingdom of archetypes that are living, are alive within us all the time, mm-hmm. would, would it be fair to say that there would be, ideally you'd have a, 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 an equal split between the sort of a masculine type archetypes and a feminine archetype to then, you know, within your inner kingdom? Or sometimes is it a thing where you can have someone who's, Maybe uh, someone who's super masculine might account for like three of those and you might have six or, you know, different so that there's some kind of balance within it. I, I don't know, understand like how that might work, play out within the, your archetypes that are within us. Mm. Thanks, bro. I appreciate all these questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, at a, before, before like going down into the details of the different archetypes within the inner kingdom, I think the understanding of how energy flows like in some Chinese traditions and in Tantra is the recognition of both polarities. They could be light and dark, masculine and feminine. And the work inside us, I think, is to just have an inner marriage that is equally balanced of both of those. You know, there's there's light and dark, there's masculine and, and, and feminine. And I think to come into greater alignment where both of those are more in resonance is the middle of the polarity map where you're dancing between these two, accessing them when you need them, recognizing when you spend too much time in one of them and come back is sort of the idea of getting this inner marriage between masculine and feminine to be on equal standing. And that's sort of how I, the basis of how I understand it, where I took my work was into the inner kingdom because specifically for men, the analogy of a kingdom seems to make sense. And when someone who's a little lost, like I was, finds their king and says, right, I'm fucking in charge here. And I recognize that there are other voices that come up inside my head from time to time. I'm going to get to know these voices. I'm going to get to know who they are and I'm going to listen to them. And the inner kingdom tool gives you like these different processes to be able to identify some of these. And the truth about archetypal work is we all have access to all of these things. We can all be a rebel. We can all be a victim. We can all be a seducer. We can all be king and we can all be queen. So really the, the tool is really an opportunity to check which of these are the most alive in you and who makes the most noise in your world at various times in your life and then give that being a name. That's my little princess because she's got tendency to just want to run and skip and jump and just play music all day and not do anything else, you know? And if I don't take time to, to give her space, there starts to I start to feel unease in the kingdom. So getting to know these various parts of yourself by recognizing them from a list You can be like, ah, I know that one. That's my CEO. He's the guy who's checking the books all the time. You give him a name. You recognize what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. And so, yeah, how it actually lands on the map is hopefully you've got enough of these beings in in your inner kingdom that you've recognized that help you balance the polarity of masculine and feminine in a way that you can navigate in your life. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I don't actually have explained it that way. So, yeah, I have that to get to reconnected with my princess you know her her name's diana i've just recently it starts like this you don't always have all of them you recognize you have a king yeah i'm king and then you're like okay but the kingdom needs a queen and so for the process is to recognize that i was calling in a queen and somehow queen Wilhelmina came into my world and i recognized that she was this yeah like brilliant leader in she was a dutch queen and um, she was the first female billionaire and all these things just like came in. I was like, cool, that's a, that feels like my queen. And so Queen Wilhelmina is the queen in my kingdom. And I recognize what her strengths are and what her weaknesses are. She loves to 
gossip and hear what's happening and likes to keep, you know, connected to the news and, you know, and she can be a little bit of a gossiper. Like these are some of the shadow sides of the queen, but she's a great hostess and a homemaker and loves to cook. So that's sort of how I'm developing the, the parts of myself that I think need a bit more space as a way to come into better alignment with these two parts, masculine and feminine. So, so that, the, so the, the way to use this is, is in some practical sense too, right? Like where does the, the rubber meet the road is that you, if you're feeling out of sorts in a real world scenario, not, not, so not, not in the kingdom, let's say just, I, I feel off or I feel like shit or something. Is that, is that where you can maybe look, go back and go like, okay, maybe there's something out of my in the kingdom here and I'm not, and I haven't been um, seeing and nurturing that archetype within myself is that is that how the rubber meets the road kind of thing mm -hmm. exactly so when when you feel anxious your emotions are your guide you always know how you are in every moment by asking how i feel and this analogy of your emotional guidance system is like the gps for your car that gets you to where you're going and so when we get disconnected from that too much cannabis too much porn too much whatever it is because we don't want to feel uncomfortable we're starting to ignore our inner guidance system that's letting us know that, you know, I started out feeling a little bit uncomfortable with my shitty job. It soon becomes a lot of frustration. I'm not going to feel that. And before you know it, like you're drowning in a sea of depression and you can't, you're not sure what it is. Like at some point, you've got to get back to reconnect it with your emotions. Like, what am I feeling? And then check in with who it is. So that's practically who is it in my inner kingdom and what do they need? Because I, I, I teach it in a way that it's like, anybody like a normal human being and what it looks like in practice for me is when i spend too much time in this studio creating writing content etc i can go a couple of days and then a part of me is starting to feel like whoa i'm super super spacey and i recognize who is it in the family that needs something in the inner kingdom normally it's my kid we haven't been outside for a run or to go for a walk or do anything fun it's just been work 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 so yeah the question is who like a normal kingdom who needs what? Yeah, somebody's probably been neglected for a while. And if you've identified that, if you've identified it over time and with quite specifically as a sort of an avatar within yourself, that it becomes a lot easier to recognize when, uh, when, you've, when you haven't been doing, you know, serving that person. So that's why the exercise is so important because otherwise it's like, um, I, I guess sometimes we, it's this whole thing of when we're in our heads, right? We, we, and we haven't put something on paper, for example, it's like, it just feel, I feel uneasy and it's just easy to just feel like, fuck, I don't feel great. And why everyone, I'm snapping at everyone. And unless you've got like some kind of a way of, of identifying what that is, it's, it's quite hard actually, because yeah. So I think it's, yeah, I, that's think, actually I want to share great. something. So on this, like, let me give you this. So let's use it with your, your inner polite boy. We both share this archetype very strongly as a function of where we've come from. So your inner polite boy, like what is, what are his strengths? Interesting. I haven't thought of that. So um, I guess the strengths are um, when you're pleasing people, people generally like you, you're likable. Um, you can mm -hmm. you know that you can magnetize someone by doing the mm -hmm. things that they, you know they want you to do. Um, okay. And so, so that would, I guess that's some kind of a positive. Um, yeah. I mean, in, in some ways, when we go back, your inner Palat boys also helped you get access to things, you know, yeah, as a, sure. as a strategy, you've, you've, you've used him to, uh, yeah, get through life, keep your parents happy. Yeah. You know, like, so 100%. those are, those are all positives. Yeah. So then using the tool now would be like, where does, where does this character show up in your life and sabotage things? Are you able to articulate that? Mm. Can you see where that? Yeah. Goes? You spoke into it earlier. One of the things you spoke into earlier, right? The, Around what? The fact that it's that part of you that when there's a space in the conversation, it feels impolite oh, to hang around yes, and feel yes, awkward yes. so that your yeah. default strategy is to walk away, right? So that yes, would be yes, one yes. potentially. Because I have that as well. That's how I know it. When you said it, I'm like, fuck, I know that part. Oh, really? I would rather not be in the conversation ah. than have it be awkward. I've had that for a long time. Is that right? My meditation yeah. has been like with you to just trust that something else will arise and it's, it's, it's hard for me to do and I tracked it to being Charlie because Charlie wants to always be like happy, fun, friendly, polite, keep the conversation flowing. Before it gets awkward, I'm gone. Fucking gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I identify with Charlie. Yeah. So I think that's a big one. And then obviously it's just um, you, when you're doing that all the time, you, you 100% are not accessing your own needs because you're, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're totally 
it's it's more valuable in Charlie's mind. I haven't created an archetype name for for my inner like people pleaser, but um, that it's more valuable in that person or that archetype's mind to make someone else feel good and make sure that that it, the awkwardness is okay and I'm safe and it's okay and um, I'm, I'll live to see another day is more important <laughs> than you know what I mean than then like having my boundary, having, um, doing the hard thing. So, so I, it's almost, I, talking about it now, it almost makes me think that, that, that people play pleasing aspect is almost like a, um, yeah, it, it's just a way of kicking the can down the road. And yeah, it's, it, it's very negative actually. Like when you, when you really start to look at it and yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you've, you've delved into your, your archetype there. Is it, is a similar type of thing in your, in your, people pleasing side yeah bro firstly thank you what you what you share there and how you unpack that is yeah it i think it's going to serve so many listeners that are that have this piece because i've actually seen it play out when i started to get to know charlie he's fucking everywhere like yeah. he's in the bedroom with me he's in the yeah. boardroom with me he's in my negotiations in relationship it's like yeah. what is that like the seven-year-old version of me is upset that the 40 year old women that I've been making love to in Mexico for the last two weeks can't handle the truth. So he's like a little bit economical with how I deliver the news that I don't actually want to be there with you for the rest of my life, which I'm feeling is what you want. And rather than hurt her feelings, I can't be honest. That's, that's not polite at all. It's actually freaking horrible, yeah, you know? Yeah, interesting. And so I've seen him there. I've seen him in the work that I'm doing. He like I'll create something about semen retention or something that I think may trigger my mother or my mother's friends. <laughs> and a part of Charlie's like saying, no, nah, no, nah, we don't have to post that, you know. And so then he yeah. gets upset and he disrupts the whole inner kingdom that makes me sabotage in a different way. Like it's it's sneaky, bro. Like yeah, he's yeah. the one that's actually upset. But there's a part of me that's like, oh, not maybe not today or I've. I smoked a joint. I'll, I'll create it tomorrow when I'm when I'm sober. Ah. And so, what's actually happening there is Charlie doesn't want to have the difficult conversation and share it with the world because maybe somebody will be upset about it. And See, that's actually what I was when I got I got a bit sidetracked. And I, clearly, when when your when your brain doesn't want to look at it, that's a good sign. It's like a it's my mind went straight away when I wanted to say something to you earlier, and it kind of disappeared. It's it's actually a it's actually a weakness, right? In terms of your like fortitude of of doing what you know is the right thing to do it's 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 a you just articulated really well it's like a it's in disguise of you doing the nice thing but actually the it's it's you not having the courage to do something that's actually what it is because the courage mm -hmm. it takes courage to maybe be rejected it takes courage to say something that your mother's friends might fucking gossip about for the next few days um mm -hmm. and maybe learn something too hopefully <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so, so yeah, actually, yeah. I think it links really well with courage. And I think in, and, and, it, and thanks for saying that, because I think if I, if I start seeing my inner people pleaser come through, which happens every fucking day of my life. Um, mm -hmm. if, if I see that coming through, I'm going to start saying, don't talk shit. You're not doing this to, to make it better or, or to help someone else. You're doing this because you're not having courage to to do what you actually know is the right thing to do. I mean, I had something sim like recently. Someone got me at the shopping center, and they were like, "This is a random example," but she was super mm -hmm. nice, and she's like, "Do you want to pay this money to this charity?" And I already make donations in my in you know in my own way, and I and I know that I didn't want to do it, but I signed up okay. for this thing, and I was like, "Fuck, man!" I, afterwards, I had to phone them and say, "Look, I, I made a mistake. I'm going to need to con cancel this contribution that I'm making," mm. and it's like double the work double the pain in the ass. I also fucking mm -hmm. wasted her time. I wasted people on the phone's time and I wasted my own fucking time and money. So, and mm -hmm. I'm like, if I just had the courage to not make this person feel bad is, is kind of what I was thinking at the time. And I didn't want to upset uh -huh. them. I made it worse. And I'm like, fuck man, how, how many times have I done that in my life where I'm like, even in this late stage of the game, you know, like, I just, turned, <laughs> you know, I, I turned 40 recently. And I'm like, the next 10 years is going to be, a, you know, all the right, you know, kind of make make plans and do, this is going to be different. And, I'm not, and then like two days later, I'm like, fucking, yeah, no worries. Um, let me sign up. 
I'm like, while I'm doing it, I'm like, you fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, anyway. God. I'm sure we've all so done good, like that and, you know. Yeah, I think it's a life lesson. I think I have this thought at some point, like most of us only have like one, sometimes two lessons to learn in our life. You know, like you've only really got one thing we need to fix in this incarnation or solve. And yeah, it's you're just going to fall into different versions of the same hole. You know, that same wound's going to come up at some point. Like it's deeply mm. imprinted in who we are. And, you know, maybe you shifted in this lifetime, but probably you won't. But if you become a little bit more aware of it and you sign up for less charity things and you, you know, maybe you're on five a year instead of 25 a year. <laughs> Every day you go to the shops. To, oh, hello. What's my money? Sure, What's I'll my money? Story? Why do I have no money? Like I can give it all to everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to, before we um, run out of time, this has been magic. What is your, share your journey and relationship to pain. We've had some really interesting conversations about your mental and meditative process around pain and i don't know why that came up but i trust that it's something i want to speak about because i remember being so moved when you shared that with me before when i was with you in australia mm. what is that what has your relationship been with pain over your life well thanks for sharing that man i'm or asking that it's a it's not obviously an easy an easy answer or easy thing to sort of delve into but um one way or another, just to cut a long story short, I've, since I was about 17, I've been dealing on and off with a sort of autoimmune issue. And, um, and every now and then I, I um, get like super bad flare-ups in my joints and, and bad inflammation, swelling in my joints and stuff. And it's, um, it's really excruciating. Like it's, it's a man down. I'm like the last time it happened, I lost a heap of weight and I, I had to like walk around the house with like crutches and everything. It was horrible. It was like I was in a lot of pain. Like, and it's 24-7. It's not... It's not like an, you can find a comfortable position and, you know, so it was really wow. challenging and I, I hadn't had a flare up for a long time. So I, I kind of thought, you know, I'd kick this thing and, and I, as you said, you know, we, we, we were all on this journey of trying to like find out what are these deeper triggers in our lives for whatever it is. For me, it happens to be a physical manifestation of, of something that's clearly not fully resolved. And I mean, this is a mm -hmm. whole interesting conversation in and of itself. Um, Mm -hmm. you know it's important to delve into what physical pain means and there's metaphysical reasons you want to go there give i mean a, give a high level of how you understand that because yeah what i what i'll have said in the intro but you this is what you do for a living as a chiropractor and yeah i'd love you to give a like a high level understanding of how yeah feel sure. what feels good to to give I some think, context um, i think pain is is definitely some kind of manifestation of of other things so um, the longer I've been doing, I've been working with people in one way, shape or form in, in pain and in mental distress and physical distress in one way or another for a long time now. And the longer you are around pain and, and this kind of thing, you start to, there's definitely trends. And um, you, when you come out of university, it's like, you know, the textbook stuff, something, something is, is pushing on a nerve, which causes pain, which then your body feels, you know. Mm -hmm. As you go down this track, longer and longer, you start to really understand that at first it's like, well, maybe they're a bit stressed. So then stress can increase your inflammation and inflammation can cause pain. And, you know, that, that becomes like one narrative. And then, and then you go like another step deeper and you're like, well, maybe there's something to do with, uh, with childhood trauma or there's something unresolved pain as a kid mm -hmm. or something like that that you un endured that you – you haven't unpacked. And so I've been on a journey um, with psychedelics and, 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 and conversations like this with, with good friends and, and various other uh, modalities um, to try and dig deeper in this, you know. And, and the more you go down this track, the more and more you realize some of, like, it's, it, there's a lot, there's a, a big chunk of meta, metaphysical um, manifestations and then I'm at the place now where I'm wondering how much of it is like a genetic, linear, uh, familial thing, but not in the gene sense, in like more of like a information sense carried over down the, gen the generations, like a generational trauma thing. Um, because I don't think we're a slave to our genes. And I think that most people think they do. Like how many people come to the office and say, well, my mom and dad had bad knees, so that means I've got fucking bad knees. And I'm like, that's just not true. You know, like you may be predisposed mm -hmm. to something, but that's not, 
the genes do not switch themselves on and off. That, that's epigenetics, and epigenetics is a you know, super interesting, fascinating thing that ultimately leads to a gene being expressed or not. So it's not the gene itself. So that's just, you know, in and of itself is, is not true. Um, but anyway, so, so my point of saying all of that is just that I'm aware that I've had this journey with a lot of pain, uh, physical pain mm -hmm. in my life. And I, the way I am and the way we are, and I'm sure a lot of everyone listening to this is, is like, it's an, it's an opportunity to be curious about what that means. You know, like I, I, even though when it's happening to me, I still have the wherewithal to be like, what, this is fucking interesting. Like, why is mm -hmm. this is, you know, I, I can see it from that perspective and I, and I genuinely do. And I, and I, and I always will, you know, um, with, with other people and when they're in pain and how much of it is like, um, unresolved stuff, what, you know, how much work can you do on yourself and how much, um, is it in myself? And, and so anyway, when, when I had this flare up again, not too long ago, and it was, and I was really good for prior to that for a long time, it, it really made me question everything again. I was like, well, I thought I had like clear, cleared unresolved things and what have you. So there is this question of how, how many times do you need to go through this thing until the lesson is learned? And as you said earlier, like maybe you don't in this iteration of, of this life, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, but that's kind mm -hmm. of part of the goal, right? And I think pain itself is is a. I don't know if I'm going to articulate it as, as well as I did when we chatted. I don't really remember exactly what I said to you then because I was still quite in a lot of pain then. So it might have been a bit more like um, visceral uh, at mm -hmm. the time. But the way I kind of see it is just like there's a. It's a reminder that uh, we're we're on a we're always on a precipice of some sort, and and we can. The, the depth of any experience also brings the same amount of gold usually at the end of it, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so when I'm like, you know, when I was at the depth of like feeling like just fucking done with everything, you know what I mean? Like just so shit basically. Um, there's like, it's, it's an overcoming, right? It's an overcoming and it's a mental state thing of like, it's, I guess it's the same thing as sitting in an ice bath and it's fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> But when, mm -hmm. you, when you somehow come through the end of that, there's, you, you, you do manifest some kind of a change within yourself and you're never quite the same again. And, and, uh, and I used to see that in a negative sense. I used to think, well, fuck, I've just, I felt like I, you know, you come out the other side and you feel like, Jesus Christ, I've just like run a marathon and I feel like shit and I'm tired. And, um, but now I really see it in this like, okay, this is another opportunity to, to really like unpack something that I, that I feel like is not fully resolved. Um, and, and that's a, that's a, that's a blessing. You know, I think the depth you were saying earlier, like, you know, some people have, you may have one or two things in your life that you need to sort of resolve or in your, in this, in this iteration. Right. Um, but I think people that have gone through more of these of more challenging times in, in their life and whatever that is, you know, like I've got this one thing, but other people have 55 things, you know, um, mm -hmm. That just shows that you've had you've had more you've had more iterations at, at this on a soulful level, and you've actually able to you're actually able to work through these things on a deeper layer. You're actually you're, you're given mm. what you're able to handle most of the time, mm. and and I feel Good like goal. that can be seen as a blessing because you you you're just on a you're able to get to a depth that um, that that maybe some people don't ever get to because they haven't had to, um, and uh, and I think. Um, I think so. Anyone listening to this uh, has going through some kind of fucking uh, trauma or t t tough time or, or blockage in your life or whatever. Um, I, I, you really, one should really try and see that as a blessing and go like, well, that's clearly because I'm number one able to, and I've been um, blessed to be, be able to, um, to have this opportunity to go deeper. Um, and on the other side, it's like, um, you know, there's always someone else that's worse. And I know it's cliched, but it's like, fuck it up. I'm so grateful that I have my eyes and my ears. And, you know, so it, it, I'm mm -hmm. forced into this gratitude space more often too. So, um, I don't know. I just feel like that's, that's sort of the gist of, you know, of, uh, of the way I feel it, you know, or feel into it. Mm. Yeah. So like the pain is also some sort of indication that there's something to be observed or to be looked at yeah. or to be worked through. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. good. But I mean, like, I would imagine it's the same for you, like dealing with something like some kind of pain in, say you've had pain, money pain, and you think like, why is this a blockage? Like, how do you, how do you feel like it's, it's a different kind of pain, but it's a certain pain point, let's say. 
and and mm -hmm. you're you're also digging into yourself. You've chosen to say, well, maybe it's something within me, um, and I'm assuming that's kind of what I'm talking about with with physical pain. Um, but mm -hmm. how, how do you navigate that in your own life, or how do you do you find it a curiosity thing, or do you find it like I need to fix this, or? Yeah, I think we agree. We're saying the same thing. I also agree that the I have this. I've, I've read the book. The body keeps the score. Like the idea that the physical body is merely a manifestation of yeah, some more subtle stuff that could be out of alignment, whether it's intellectually or emotionally, and it links into this analogy that I had of the emotional guidance system of recognizing that our emotions are giving us a signal at some point. The times in my life when I was frustrated and pushed on manifested as physical illness in my world. Like I didn't look well and I was not able to, yeah, you know, I was trying to get away from those uncomfortable feelings until my body eventually said to me, like I had the sense that my life would just spiral out of control. If I didn't make a different choice, I had, I got pink eye that lasted like three or four weeks. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I just, my body was letting me know something needed to change. So yeah, I think with, with regards to the money stuff for me, it's really, it's still a wound, but it's perhaps more at an intellectual or an emotional level, you know, like it hasn't manifested as physical pain in my world, but I've, there's, there's definitely some story that's being held that perhaps doesn't feel aligned to my highest good that might be trying to protect me or something to that effect. And yeah, looking at it through that lens of who is it and at this stage, I'm also doing this hypnotherapy with this coach to really dive into those beliefs and see what is it that's causing that. But yeah, there is a there is a sense of pain or wounding of sorts for sure. Yeah, I think we all have a bit of that in our in our in our journeys, since one way or another. You know, I mean, my money coach said to me today, "It's like we're all carrying every person on the planet as some collective trauma around money as a function of the world we live in, the current way money and finances flow and work." We're all carrying some stuff that may not may need to be released or at least feels like a wound for some of us. So. Mm, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about the podcast. You clearly, for those listening, you have an amazing ability to hold a conversation and to ask good questions. What did you learn from over 100 episodes of the Ridiculously Human podcast? How was that journey for you as a creator? Thanks, man. Um it was an interesting journey. It was, it was, it was uh, like any uh, crack that you have at something. You're gonna, <laughs> you, you do a lot of shit wrong, um, and you do a lot of things right. And um, sometimes, uh, you hindsight is always super helpful with anything. But but one of the big lessons was just to get started. And I think that was that's something that's taught me now that I can do that again, and I can just start something like that. And it, and it um, has been. Yeah, it's just been super valuable from that perspective. Just get started with something and it, like it grows into something else. You know, you don't, you don't know where it's going to go, but that's okay too. Um, but part of the problem was we didn't have mm -hmm. that plan from the beginning. We just enjoyed conversating with, you know, with interesting people. And one thing I must say is like, I, th I think a lot of people can benefit from having something like a podcast. Um, besides from a business perspective, it's like learning how to get people together, learning how to send a good email, uh, learning how to uh, create um, yeah, meaningful conversations uh, in, a, um, in, a sort of in, a, in a sort of a strange scenario because we, most of the time we are, we're online. So that's, it's, it can be a bit uh, challenging at times. Um, but the, the idea of... Um, just sitting down and having a longer form conversation with someone, I, I realized that everyone is interesting. Everyone has a, an amazing story. And we're not that different from one another on, on some fundamentals. And we're very different on others. But all of it is interesting. And, uh, and so there's one thing that, we, that I never ended up doing um, with our podcast that I think uh, – uh, yeah, that I kind of regret that I haven't done yet, but I, I want to. And, I, and I, we've spoken about this before, but like, I think everyone should interview their their siblings and their mom and dad and people that are close to them at some stage in their life. And uh, because one day they're going to be old and and different and not quite that 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 youthful person at some stage. And um, and it's when you're sitting down with someone 
with some intent. So this is there's an intention here, and so that's why I like it that the format. Like you sit down with someone that you love, and you have an intent you know, with an intent, and you interview them. We, we everyone behaves slightly different when you're being when there's recording happening, and mm -hmm. but I think to do that is really valuable, and um, because you can you uncover certain truths that. They're, it's almost like there's a middle, like the camera and the, the microphone is a middle ground. So they're almost speaking not to Craig, their son, or their whatever. They're speaking to the microphone, which then creates a little bit of a filter towards me, their son, for, for example. And then, uh, and you're getting a little bit more of this magic out. So I think um, creating podcasts uh, from that perspective and um, finding the reading between the lines in what, what people are saying. Um, is super fascinating to me and I, there's, there's almost no one that I've chatted to on the podcast that wasn't interesting on some level if you if you're willing to listen and ask and go beyond that 10 5 10 minute chat th when you get beyond that you start seeing people open up and, and going into the space of like um of their truth you know which is amazing you know thank you bro yeah it's such I found it to be such an amazing opportunity to have conversations that I perhaps wouldn't have I agree with the part that certain things change when it's recorded. Um, I also want to share what you spoke into there, which was some of the magic that I've gleaned from having had an intentional conversation with my mom to ask her about her life. And yeah, I think framed as something that I wanted to do to get to know her deeper has really strengthened and built our relationship in such a powerful way. Um, that's allowed me to create a safe space for her to be able to ask any of the questions that she wants from me and me to be able to do the same for her. And it's shifted our dynamic in that moment from the dynamic of mother and son to almost being like sisters, like gossiping and sharing the news of what was exciting about our lives and asking questions in that space has really strengthened and deepened our relationship in such a meaningful way. So thank you for that reflection. I actually want to continue that and, uh, interview my my dad and my brother if you can hear me i'm going to ask you this uh, yeah, this question yeah. around your your health and i'd love you to share what's shifted in your world specifically around diet because i find it to be yeah an interesting topic of conversation and it's it's been pretty strong in your healing journey right sure yeah big time so i mean it's a it's it's in some ways it's, it's super controversial because the um there's a lot of been said about it lately, but diet in and of itself is like one of the more controversial um, aspects to um, to us as human beings. Like I feel like it's it's a strange place to be because we, in this day and age, we don't have a, a clear, concise uh, way of of eating uh, that is um, agreed upon. And um, anyway, so uh, long story short, big part of this. Uh, autoimmune type stuff. I was having a lot of skin issues like psoriasis and like um, eczema and things like that. So the way I just like to do this in my life is just self-experimentation. So, I, you know, I, I, said, I said to myself, look, if I've got skin stuff going, I've got, I've got eczema, that has to be coming from the inside. I don't think it's like some kind of um, emotional trauma at this stage, although I think there's always linked to something there. But I felt like I just had this intuition that it was something to do with um, like my internal world physically. Um, and I said to myself, okay, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try different ways of eating. And when this mm -hmm. stuff the, goes away, that's going to be the thing I'm going to um, stick to because I know that that means I'm not, I haven't put like something to cover up the symptom. I'm actually going down to the root cause. So um, that made sense to me. So I tried the medical medium stuff. I tried eating like uh, eating vegan um, I tried uh, paleo type sort of stuff, and um, anyway, long story short, you know, thanks to people like Jordan Peterson and and um, just you know reading um, a, a Berry, Doctor Berry, and there's a few a few others that I was like listening to, Paul Saladino and this bunch, um, the Liver King. <laughs> I uh, I basically I want I wanted to see maybe the carnivore way of eating could could be, support me because it's a, it's a, it's a really powerful um, elimination diet essentially. Um, so uh, long story short is I, I tried to go pretty strict for the for the, when I started, and then within two weeks my skin had totally cleared up and and it was a um, that was quite an obviously it was quite an 
manifest change in, in my physical body uh, within two weeks of changing the way I was eating. Um, and then obviously I sort of delve into like, why could wow. that be? And the, the reality is that, you know, plants uh, cannot run away from you. So, <laughs> so they, uh, they stuck in the ground, uh, whereas an animal would, can bite you or claw you. So it has its own defense uh, mechanism, but a plant is the only way to sort of defend itself is to have certain um, chemicals within it that can, um, you know, maybe deter someone eating certain parts of the plant. For example, the leaves of a plant, um, you know, they wouldn't want an animal to come and eat all the leaves because, you know, it wouldn't be able to photosynthesize and, and, and would die. Um, but a plant might be okay with eating some of the fruits of the tree because then you might disperse the seeds, etc. So um, there's certain uh -huh. parts of the plants that, that make more sense to be eating, um, others that don't. Um, from this, through this lens, obviously, there's, once again, this can be a debate from, from all angles, but um, this is the way I'm sort of uh, telling myself that why it's helping and it, it makes sense to my, to my brain. Um, whereas if you were, if you went out into nature and someone said to you, listen, you're stuck out here in the bush, no one's coming to help you, just survive. And someone says, what would you, what would you go and eat? And the last thing you'd be saying is, I'm going to go and find some kale. I'm going to find some <laughs> uh, bark or you, you just, you're going to say, I'm going to go and eat an animal, you know? And, and um, we've had discussions around this too. Like there's, there's some kind of a interesting Venn diagram here between loving animals mm -hmm. and eating animals. Um, and, and obviously I've done quite a lot of thinking around how these circles um, come together. And, um, and it is challenging. There, there is a challenging aspect to that. I, I mean, I, people say, how can you have, love your cats and your, your dog and whatever and, and, and still go and eat a beautiful um, cow, for example? Um, right. and so there are some, it's not entirely without um, some ethical questions that you're going to have to um, entertain. But uh, the truth is that I, that I feel a thousand times better. I've never felt better, actually, and, I'm, and I'm, uh, my skin is cleared up and um, so for me, like that, that is a manifest and I've kept track of my bloods. I've done bloods regularly to see how everything's going. Everything is looking epic. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say beyond that. One should try everything and see what makes you feel the best. And, um, and don't, I, I think the, the, the food, the food pyramid or the hierarchy of, of your food and all that is we, we kind of know now that's all BS, you know, so one, one has to, um, get used to um, playing around and experimenting on yourself um, uh, and, and not take the word of anyone else in the scenario. And I think that counts for lots of things in life, but definitely with what you're eating. Thank you, man. I, you, I was listening to that saying, I'm going to wrap up by saying, you know, this, what is so important from this piece is to recognize that there isn't one size that fits all. There's no right way to do health there's no right way to raise your kids. There's no, there's not only one way to, you know, be in relationship. Like all of these things are up for debate. And if we keep tuning into what our deep desires are and seeing what works in our lives by what we eat, like, yeah, most of the time we know what's good for us and we should, we should choose the path that serves us the best, whether it, whether it comes to what we eat or, you know, how we choose to raise our children, whatever it is. Like, I think, what you've done there is illustrated in a powerful way that, yeah, something's not lined up. I'm going to try search searching and you can only read so much before you actually need to experiment in a way and try it on and see if it works, gather some data and see what happens. So I've seen you doing that for many things in your life. And uh, yeah, kudos. It's a, it's a powerful way to live, brother. Thanks, my man. Really appreciate it. And same to you, man. It's been a, it's been a real journey and uh great opportunity to have brotherhood and, and um, I really wishing like absolute success with your men's groups, because I think it's, it's, there's very few things that are as valuable as that right now. Appreciate you being on the show, brother. <laughs> thank you for being alive. And uh, yeah, thank you for being my mate, bro. I really um, I honor our friendship and what you're bringing to the world and what you're creating with Chantel is um, yeah, an absolute blessing. And uh, I appreciate you, my man. Thanks, brother. Same to you, brother. All the best and all the best uh, for this amazing podcast, brother.